What's good, Wizards fans? It's your host, The Real Ed Oliver, my guy, Brandon Scott. Today, we're going to give you guys an injury update on Johnny Davis and react to the ESPN Top 100 and where some of the Wizards are ranked. Let's get to it. You are Locked On Wizards, your daily Washington Wizards podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So I think you guys making a lot of noise is your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts. And this is your guy, the real Ed Oliver, and my guy, Brandon Scott, bringing you guys another Locked on Wizards episode. Just want to give a quick shout out. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked on NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. All right, so we're going to get into some injury updates. Uh, this was some news that the Washington Wizards, they put out on social media. They announced that Johnny Davis will be missing one to two weeks. So this is the tweet. Washington uh, guard Johnny Davis sprained his left elbow during Sunday's practice. The injury will be treated conservatively, and his return to play prognosis will be evaluated weekly through clinical and fu- functional testing. He is expected to miss one to two weeks. Brandon, what is your thoughts on uh, this injury news? How does it, how do you think this affects the rotation, and how do you think this affects Johnny Davis? Johnny Davis's upcoming season. Uh, last time I saw, it was uh, I believe he was maybe out one to two weeks. I believe so he might miss the opener, but I guess long term is not too much of a concern. But again, you know, looking at Johnny Davis, man, you know he needs all the playing time he can get. So you definitely want to get a hot start to hit this season you know get his feet running you know definitely you know get as much again get as much playing time as he can so i'm not too concerned like i said one or two weeks you know yeah he very well could be ready for the open now kind of looking at the rotation man if he doesn't play who plays at the two guard on the second unit i you know there's a couple of options man uh depending on who you start on the first unit if denny starts at the three then you can see kisper at the two and Bilal at the three now i know a lot of people calling for Bilal to start but I think for right now, um, Denny's probably going to get the nod at small forward going to start to the regular season. Now, you know, it, it depends because, you know, is, is Ty is still that guy to start? You know, it's just some questions there. Did, did he play Bilal at the two? You know, there's a lot of variations. But it, it feels me, if, you know, if I was going to bet on man, I would say that uh, your second unit would have Kispert at the two and Bilal at the three. Obviously, uh, DeLon Wright running the second unit. So, yeah, it's it's I'm not too concerned, you know, but – I'm a little concerned for him because I want him to start the season, definitely start the season getting playing time, get his feet wet, you know, and get going, man, because this is a very pivotal season for him amongst other people. But for him, especially because, you know, he wasn't drafted by this front office, so their patience, the, you know, the amount of rope he's going to get, the amount of loyalty that you're going to have for him is going to be questionable. So I, I definitely want to see him get as much playing time as he can this season. Right, 100%. So I'm looking at the Wizards depth chart right now. Blau is penciled in as this. I mean, Wes Hilson Jr. hasn't put this out. And it's just the ESPN depth chart. Yeah. So it's nothing really official at all. But Blau is starting at the three. It has Denny right behind him as the backup three. I don't think that would be the day one starting lineup. But um, yeah, as you said, I mean, Johnny, right now, Johnny, also looking at the ESPN depth chart, he's really he's the fourth string shooting guard. It's Jordan yeah. Poole. Starting at the two, Corey as the backup shooting guard. Shemet's the third string guy, and then Johnny Davis is your is the fourth string shooting guard. But I do think he was going to get playing time, and it's tough because he was gaining p- positive momentum. I know it was the Cairns, the typing, the Taipan Cairns, who he played really well against. Then he had a solid game against the Hornets as well. Yeah, uh, but it's unfortunate. This this is it's, it's a setback, but it's a minor setback. It's not too yeah. much of a setback. He's only going to be out one to two weeks, and uh, Shemet is supposed to be back before the season starts or he he may miss one game or two but uh i i just it, it's tough seeing this happen especially in practice because johnny has some positive momentum going so i wanted to see him carry that and he needs as many reps and as many as much practice as he can get he really can't afford really missing any time because he he just needs to really get out there and and, and uh and, and develop as much as possible so yeah. Uh, it is tough, and these preseason games were probably really important for him because he he he's going to get a, he was getting a lot of playing time in these preseason games as well. So it's tough seeing this. I know Gaff had an elbow injury, 
Now Johnny Davis with another in, with an elbow injury, and then Shamet gets hurt in practice yeah. with a toe injury. So I don't know what's going on with these practices. I know they got to practice tough, of course, but it's unfortunate they keep, we keep getting these injuries in practice. So uh, I hope it's a speedy recovery. If he does miss a regular season game, I only think it's going to be one or two. So yeah, uh, but yeah, for his sake, I think he needs as many as many practice reps as he can get, especially just working on that jumper and and just working on his confidence. So. Uh, but I, I think he'll be fine this season, and uh, I think he kind of stays where he's really at. It's really between kind of him and Shamet for that third string shooting guard because Corey's the backup two, and then yeah. Denny, Denny and Bilal are going to be your three, your small forwards for the most part, small forward slash power forward. Kuz is, is of course, going to start. So I think Johnny kind of stays where he's really at right now. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's not going to really change where, he, where he's at in the pecking order. But it really depends on Schmidt how fast he comes back because things can change. There's a lot of factors with this rotation. Because if you look at the, what's going on with Denny, um, dealt with a little bit of injuries, but you know what was going on in the war overseas. You know other factors are off the court. Um, could they start him on the bench to kind of get him going? Because he hasn't he has played in preseason, so you know preseason is important, man. Definitely getting those reps in and getting your body and your mind ready for the regular season. So maybe that it best serves Denny to start on the bench. You know, because obviously there's a lot going on off the court again, and uh, he's dealt with his injuries with you know this back so far. This you know this training camp and this you know the two first two preseason games. So you very well could see Bilal start at the three. So it, it all depends on what West wants to do. Um, because really the hot hand is definitely Bilal. You know, if you look at the small four position, the hot hand is Bilal Kulabali. So you very well could see him start at the three. So it is a lot of variations. But Johnny, you know, like like I said, one to two weeks. Could improve, but I mean, like you said, man, there's a lot of injuries going on in the practice, man. I mean, Wesley to simmer down a little bit, <laughs> you know. But but it, but, then, but then again, I like to see that intensity, you know what I'm saying? Because right. West is definitely ramping stuff up. I like to see that intensity. So you know, injuries happen, man. It's, it's one of those unfortunate things, but injuries happen. But again, I think it's really cool to see West really ramping up for the regular season. So again, I'm not too concerned, man. You know, one or two weeks, I'm looking more like a one week thing. Um, even if he misses a game, it's going to be one game. So. Uh, and does it really impact his where he's at in the pecking order? Again, it depends on Shamet. And like you said, he's he's not back up because you still got Corey Shamet, you know, him, and him. So they still have a lot of kind of changing people around here and there to really get him some playing time. But when he gets that playing time, he's got to perform and he's got to really go, man. So yeah, I'm not concerned too concerned. Mm -hmm. Right. And other other injury updates that came out within the last 24 to 48 hours. Josh Robbins tweeted. The Wizards are making progress with their few injury issues. This was before the Johnny Davis news came out. So he said they're making progress, and then we get a setback with the Johnny Davis news. Uh, he said Denny Avdia, Patrick Baldwin Jr., and Todd Gibson all were full participant practice participants today. Weston Sue Jr. said the only people who weren't full participants were Anthony Gill with the hamstring injury and Landry Shamet with the toe injury. So, so some of the guys are coming back. It looks like Denny, he may play in the preseason game. We'll see. All about right. that news, Patrick Baldwin. I would like to see him play in the, in the in the preseason game. I think he needs all the practice and reps that he can get before the season starts. Then in top, Todd Gibson is you know he's are you down? You Donis Haskell, I mean, <laughs> without the winning and with, with without the championships, he's our uh, you Donis Haskell. So <laughs> it kind of doesn't really. I mean, whether you know he he can take his time for sure. You know he's an old he's a veteran. I'm not gonna call him old, but he's a veteran, so he needs all the time he can get to uh, to get back and uh, get back in that you Donis Haskell role. But uh, we're going to talk about the ESPN Top 100 and talk about where uh, some of the Washington Wizards are ranked, where they rank too low, where they disrespect in any way. But before we get to that, today's episode is brought to you by Better Help. Do you ever feel like your brain is getting in its own way? Uh, definitely need to, you definitely need to use Better Help for sure. I use uh, Better Help, especially after Commanders games, even though they finally did win a game, <laughs> but they definitely put – if you're a commander fan, you understand the toughness that they put us through for sure. So there are there's some grieving and some tough times I go through being a commander's fan. But, you know, if you're having a tough day at work or, you know, you had a tough time talking to your friends, definitely use better help. Therapy helps you figure out what's holding you back so you can work for yourself instead of against yourself. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give better help a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNBA today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, 
H E L P dot com slash locked on NBA. All right, Brandon. So I'm pulling up the NBA top 100 right now. And the only guys that made the list were Kyle Kuzma and Jordan Poole. So I'm not surprised about that at all. Now, Jordan Poole, he was ranked 72, I yeah. want to say. So yeah, he's ranked 72. The write up they had on ESPN about him was. Uh, last year he was ranked 55, so they dropped him all the way down to 70, 72. That's a pretty significant drop. Uh, the write-up on him was say, what they said one game to watch the season December 22nd at Golden State. Poole will face his old team for the first time since he was traded for Chris Paul in January and at his own old stopping grounds. No less, even if he doesn't admit there is extra motivation for him in this game, it will be an opportunity for Poole to show how he can be, an, be the offensive focal point on the team. And uh, that, the, that was the end of the article. Uh, guys ahead of him are R.J. Barrett at 71, Walker Kessler at, at 70, Brooke Lopez at 69, Michael Porter Jr. at 68, O.J. Ananobi at 67, and Austin Reeves at 66. So, so those are the guys that are ahead of him right. The six the six guys are, are ahead of him. Uh, do you think Jordan Poole was too low or too high? Uh, I think he was slightly too low. Um, I didn't have a problem with anybody but Austin Reeves. I think Austin Reeves should have been behind him a little bit. I mean, Austin Reeves can ball, man. It's just as to me, Jordan Poole's more dynamic. You know, he 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 takes more attention from the defense than Austin Reeves. And he, like I said, nothing against Austin Reeves. To me, I believe that Jordan Poole's a better player. Um, looking at Kuz eighty six, man. Yeah, I mean, look at some of the guys in front of him. I mean, was it Cam Johnson? He, I, to me, he's better than him. Um, RJ Barrett at 71. I don't know how you feel about it, E, but I I like Kyle Kuzma more. I mean, RJ Barrett can definitely ball, but at 71, you know, he's had his struggles. Um, Scoot, I look, don't get me wrong, man. Scoot can definitely Scoot is definitely gonna be a superstar, in my opinion. Um, but I just have a problem with guys who are being rated and haven't played one minute of a regular season game in the NBA. I just, I, you know, and, this, and you know, I'm not even going to hate on Zion this year, man, because I do every year because they got him in the fifties. So, you know, obviously the injuries, you know, but then, you know, he looks like he's beefed up and ready to roll. So we'll see. Um, I believe it was Kyrie Irvin that said, you know, he really put some smoke on the rankings, like, you know, saying that <laughs> nobody really pays attention to him. You know, it's really up to the outlets, like ESPN, sport news, whatever. So um, do the players really respond after that? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but yeah, Kessler was one that I thought it was a little too high. Um, Kate Cunningham, nah. I mean, his injuries. So it, it, it all depends, man. It's, it's it's really funny how you rank because um, some guys they have too high to have injury issues. I mean, we say it every year, man. You know, there's sometimes you know it's a popularity contest. You see guys a little too high, but I think they're they're right where they need to be. But I mean, in my opinion, Cam Johnson needs to be higher. I mean, he needs to be lower than. Kuz, man. And R.J. Barrett, I think that if you look at the fact that um, Kyle Kuzma is more clutch, I think he's more clutch than R.J. Barrett. I think that R.J. Barrett is way too high. So that, that's kind of where I stand with, with the top 100. Mm -hmm. Yeah, last year Kyle Kuzma was not ranked in the top 100. The write-up also says Kuzma made strides last season, averaging 21.7 boards and a career-high 3.7 assists per game. Now that Bradley Bill and Chris Porzingis have been traded, the Wizards will lean on Kuz even more while they also added Jordan Poole. Kuzma scoring load should only increase. Uh, Anthony Simons is ahead of Kuz. Clint Capella, I think. I think Kuz honestly is 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 better than Clint Capella. I do like Clint Capella, but I think he's better. Tobias yeah. Harris is ahead. Cam Johnson is ahead, like you said. I, I think I think Kuz is, is better than Cam Johnson. Bobby Portis is ahead of Kyle Kuzma. That's a close. One. I'm a big fan of Bobby Portis. I liked him when he was with yeah. the Wizards for about a half yeah. season, but I, I kind of would take Kuz over Bobby Portis. Jalen Green. Uh, yeah, Austin Reeves being ahead of Jordan, being ahead of Jordan Poole, I definitely disagree with that. Yeah, I, I get because Jordan Poole didn't have a great playoff series. I get it. You know, everybody's down on him right now, and the whole thing with the Warriors blaming him, or a lot of people blame making him the scapegoat for why things didn't work out last year. But uh, and then Walker Kessler being ahead of Jordan Poole, I really disagree with that too. I, I like Walker yeah. Kessler again. I like him too. I think he's a good big. Had a good rookie season. You know, blocked a lot of shots rebounded the ball really well uh finished around the room really well but still just for him to be 70 already mm -hmm. i disagree i think he's top 80 but not 70 yeah i'm with you i mean i'm a big fan of him too but i, I don't think he's ahead of either one of these guys man to be honest with you um yeah clint capella i mean as far as a rim protector yeah but i mean he <laughs> pushed him out the lane he, he has no offensive <laughs> tool bag at all i mean so he's just very limited offensively so yeah that's questionable man i mean 
yeah, I, Capella's way too high in my opinion. So, yeah, I, I don't really put too much into the rankings because it's a combination of factors, man. You know, it's a lot, lot of the time it is popularity contest. You got to understand that Austin Reeves played well while playing with LeBron. So, obviously, yeah. they're going to push him up on the list a little bit because, you know, the Lakers and this, just the prestige that surrounds the Lakers. Um, so it's just, it's kind of like the 2K ratings, man. It's, you know, sometimes it's a popular contest. Sometimes it's just, so I don't, I don't put too much into it, but I think that sometimes they do motivate players, but yeah, I mean, it, hopefully we can get more than two guys on the next year, man. You know, I'm starting to see more guys on the list, but yeah, I'm not too surprised, man. You know, a few names here and there, like we already talked about, but they're right where, you know, kind of in the neighborhood where they should be in my opinion. Right. Yeah. So it it, it is. You know, it is like a popularity contest, and it's, it's fine. I think uh, it's just on the measure of Mitchell Robinson. He was ranked 100. He was super <laughs> happy about that. So some guys have fun with it. Some guys don't mind it. So but um, it definitely can change. I think Jordan Poole, at the end of the season, he certainly can go up into the top 50 for sure. I think Kyle Kuzma can do the same thing and, and possibly get into the top 50 uh, when the season is over. So, But um, we're going to get to the GM survey. The only thing that the Wizards were, were named in the GM survey, we're going to talk about that real quick and we'll – wrap it up for tonight but before we get into that today uh brandon has a quick word yes sir tonight's episode is brought to you by game time now i've had my issues with uh ticket apps you know i'll try to get play all tickets to the baltimore Orioles through Seat geek and i was none too pleased because the prices dropped at the last minute and my plans fell through and i couldn't went and couldn't get tickets so i was very upset but game time has got me you shouldn't have to worry about buying tickets to your next big event. Game time is fast and easy to use to buy tickets for all sports and music, comedy shows, theater events, and everything near you with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and the best price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Game time is the only ticketing app that gives you a complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy, which is big. So you know exactly what to expect when you arrive to the ballpark slash arena. All in prices show that you, you're total upfront, so you know you're getting a great deal without hidden fees. And buy tickets in seconds with two taps. Game Summit has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event. Good Lord. And even an hour after it starts, so it's the best place to find last-minute tickets. Find exclusive flash deals and sponsor deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy shows, theater, and more. With zone deals, you'll pick a section and game time picks the seats for an average of 18% savings. And game time guarantee means you get the best price guarantee. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use the code locked on NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on NBA for $20 off. Download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And Thank you for making Locked the Wizards your first listen every single day. Every day is tomorrow's show. We're going to do a preview for the third preseason game for the Washington Wizards. So definitely tune in for that. Yes, sir. All right. So the GM survey, the only section that the Wizards were brought up in was the odds for the NBA most improved player for, 2020, for the 2023-2024 season. Uh, the guys that were listed was, were Michael Bridges, Cade Cunningham, Tyrese Maxey, Austin Reeves, Jordan Poole, and Scotty Barnes. What were your thoughts about that list? I don't have a problem with the list of outside of Austin Reeves, man. I, I'm just – I mean, if you look at the guys on the list, man, these are guys that are taking some serious steps forward, man. I mean, Scotty Barnes is a guy who can, he potentially can be a superstar. I don't see Austin Reeves as, as a superstar. I, I just don't see it. I mean, Jordan Poole is good to see because, you know, he's got a lot of high marks, man. Um. Kevin Garnett just said on, I believe, on his podcast how he compared him to, man, what was the, what was the deal that he compared him to? Um, yeah, you, know, you you remember E? But he had a comparison. He oh, remember, Kevin Garnett. Yeah. Um, he compared him to James Harden, but yeah, boom, yeah, yeah. yeah. James Harden leaving OKC. That says a lot because uh, you know James Harden created his name as far as a superstar when he went to Houston. Now he was a six man, you know, he had a lot of potential, but. He was officially that guy when he went to Houston. So they're saying that, you know, this move to Washington is going to be a big move for Jordan Poole. It's going to give him the opportunity to be a focal point of offense, you know, show some leadership, be a, a building block for the franchise. And I think, you know, it's really interesting. So I agree with the list, man. And I hate the harp on Austin Reeves, man. Because <laughs> a lot of people think I hate – I don't hate Austin Reeves, man. I just – I just, I'm not high on him like a lot of people are. I think that you know, a, lot of, a lot of Lakers fans are very high on him. But I'm just, I'm just not high on I, I think he has a lot of potential. 
But I think being on the list with guys who have, you know, taken that step to start them, I, I, I don't see it. So, you know, but it is cool to see Jordan Poole on that list. I think that, you know, the NBA is starting to show a little respect as far as the Wizards making that move for him by flipping him for, uh, you know, getting Chris Paul or flipping Chris Paul for him. So, mm-hmm. yeah, so I see uh, they also on the survey, they, they had what was the most underrated player acquisition? And um, honorable mention was Jordan Poole and Tyus yeah. Jones. Yeah. The top of the list was Marcus Smart at 17%. Uh, but, yeah, Jordan Poole being on the list, I'm not surprised. I mean, he has an opportunity, like you said, with, with Kevin Durant brought that up. Uh, he has a chance to really have, you know, the keys to the car and take a lot of shots. He has the greenest of green lights. Oh, yeah. He said that on media day as well. So he really has an opportunity to, you know, take a leap in his game because he doesn't have to. You know, he's not playing with Steph Curry. He's not playing with Clay and, and Andrew Wiggins and other guys who, who are definitely getting a lot of shots. It's really just him and Kuz who are going to get 20 to 25 shots a game. They're going to take a lot of shots. So yeah. his, his his numbers are certainly going up, can go up. Um, it's just a efficiency for him and, and just cutting down the turnovers. But uh, he certainly has a chance to really take a huge leap with the Wizards. Oh, absolutely. I think that, you know, he's definitely the future. <laughs> you know, he's definitely part of the foundation of the future, man. Um, Is he that guy to build around? I don't know yet. You know, that's the only thing I'm unsure about is, is he the building block? But I definitely think he's part of the foundation for this franchise, man. I don't want to see him trade him. And, I, I, you know, I know it's been kind of put out there that he, he as well could be, you know, kind of a piece down the line like Kyle Kuzma to flip for a first-round pick. But I think that he definitely has to be in the conversation for being a part of the foundation for this franchise because, I mean, he hasn't even hit his prime yet, man. He's young. He shows that he can play at a high level in this league, man. And I think that we have a budding superstar in the making. I mean, I think that we have a few guys on this roster, man, if not two to three guys on this roster who could bloom to be all-stars, in my opinion. And I think that Jordan Poole is one of them. So, yeah, the fact that his name is mentioned, I agree with that. You know, again, um, Ty Jones, you hear a lot of people saying that, you know, his acquisition is very underrated. So we'll see. Um, Looking at Ty's real quick, these next two preseason games, he's got to show out to me. Because the last one, I I just I wasn't impressed with the last one, man. You know, for him to take – I think – I still want him to fight for that starting job. I don't want to hand it to him. I think the next two preseason games, I want to see what he can do as far as a starting point guard. He doesn't need to score a bunch of points. I just want to see how he can orchestrate the offense, really utilize the shooters, man. So I, I like to see, you know, his assist game go up in these next two preseason games. But, you know, Tyus Jones, I think, is going to be intriguing too as far as an underrated move. So, and, you know, there's, there's some optimism in the 202 with the Wizards, man. You know, you see a lot of people, you know, Wizards Twitter, uh, fans overall, they're optimistic because there's, there's some talent here. So, and Jordan Poole is definitely – a guy who is going to put the NBA on notice, man. So I love it. Yeah, Tyus Jones, he was also in the server as well. Which active player will make the best head coach someday? Tyus Jones got votes for that. Number one was Chris Paul. Uh, of yeah. course, yeah, Chris yeah. Paul certainly <laughs> rejected that for him being a coach because, you know, he's certainly a loud voice on the court for sure. Mike Conley's number two. Garrett Temple, number three, the former Wizard. That makes yeah. sense. Drew Holiday, Fred Van Vliet. But, yeah, the next two games, yeah, I do want to see something from Tyus Jones for sure. I do want to see him. Uh, you know, control the game, get get yeah. your pool open, create shots for other guys, get downhill. Uh, I want to see him knock down the floater, knock down threes, you know, kind of, you know, put effort towards, you know, put effort on defense for sure. I think LaMelo Ball did get the best of him. He just looked yeah. overmatched, and LaMelo Ball looked like he was six foot nine out there playing against Tyus Jones. He just looked a foot taller than him. He, he just scored a little too easily on Tyus at times. So, yeah. yeah, I do want to see a bounce back game for Tyus. That definitely wasn't his best game. I want to say, didn't he go for like 0 for 5 or something like that? So yeah, he, yeah. It was, I think it was one point. So, it was definitely an off night, man. But Yeah. So, yeah, preseason, that's the time to get it out of his system for sure. Because <laughs> uh, we definitely don't want to see that again from Tyus. But, uh, yeah, Jordan Poole, he's taking that leap as a leader too. So, I think, yeah, just the maturity that he's shown as well. Uh, certainly can certainly will rub off on the court too. So I'm excited to yeah. see both these guys. Uh, Tyus certainly was an underrated acquisition or possibly, possibly could be an underrated acquisition if he can push the pace and get guys open shots. So, uh, but we're going to wrap it up tomorrow night. We're probably going to do, we're going to, we're going to do a preview for the game on Wednesday as well. We just want to thank you guys for listening, making a lot of wizards your first listen every, every day. We're free and available wherever you guys get podcasts. Make sure you guys subscribe, hit the notification bell. Oh, yeah. Good win by the Commanders yesterday. It was an <laughs> ugly win, but I'll take yeah. it any day of the week. It could be a 6-3 to three win, and I'll take it any day of the week for sure. So they are at 500. They had their best start ever under the Ron Rivera era, which is definitely not great news. Uh, I mean, it's <laughs> definitely not, you know, it, it, it's sad to say for the Commanders, but, you know, we'll wrap it up there. 
Uh, we should thank you guys again. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Hail to the Wizards. Peace.